is a story of military personnel. In the classical sense, however, it is not a military story. It is a story of the army nurse, soldier of mercy. I'm Cheryl Conway. I have a very special feeling about nurses and nursing. To me, nursing is a truly proud profession. The nurse is one of the few people in our society who measures success in terms of service and benefits to mankind rather than in the achievement of personal wealth and fame. The army nurse embodies the fine attributes of nurses everywhere and then adds a few qualities of her own. She works and lives according to a simple code. Grant that I be worthy of the sacred pledge of my profession and the lives of those entrusted to my care. Help me to offer hope and cheer in the hearts of men and my country. Hope and cheer in the hearts of men the purpose and meaning of army nursing. The history of military nursing is as old as our country. It is a proud story, and one that illuminates some of the finest moments in our national history. George Washington was the first to recognize the importance of military nursing. On his recommendation, contract nurses were engaged at a salary of $2 per month, plus room and board. While the rate of pay has changed somewhat, the original need for army nurses, as expressed by George Washington, remains the same. Contract nurses were used again in the Civil War. At the beginning of the Civil War, 6,000 women performed some type of hospital service under Dorothea Dix. Again, the record was one of service and heroism. The Army Nurse Corps, as we know it, was formed just after the Spanish-American War in 1901. Here, for the first time, professional nurses were used to support the military forces in the field. In addition to caring for the sick and wounded in combat situations, these nurses, working with the doctors, became pioneers in the new fields of sanitary engineering and preventive medicine. A story that is usually lost in discussions of military maneuvers and spectacular victories. I suppose it is a quiet story. Quiet. But it illustrates human capacity for nobility. In World War I, the Army Nurse Corps really came of age. It grew from a meager 400 to a force of more than 21,000 nurses. They served with valor in new and dangerous situations, saving lives and bringing comfort to the sick and wounded. General Pershing bestowed the recognition of a grateful country on these soldiers of mercy who did their job so well. But some of them never saw the results of their devoted efforts. Between 1917 and 1918, 296 nurses lost their lives in the service of their country. The tradition continued in World War II, 
when the Corps grew to a strength of approximately 57,000. Eagerly they came to offer their services in what was to become the most savage struggle in history. They served with distinction in every theater of operation. They followed the first assault troops in North Africa. They nursed and sustained the morale of the embattled forces on Corregidor. They improvised wards and cared for the sick and wounded in the jungles of Bataan. And they brought life and comfort to the Allied forces on the bitter battlefields of Europe. Nowhere was the story more thrillingly acted out than at the Anzio beachhead. After the landing, army nurses went ashore and worked diligently during the winter of 1944. They were there when we needed them. They were there all right, and they took the same beating we did. The angels of Anzio, familiar figures in the dark, desolate winter hell. They knew their job and we knew that we could depend on them. They worked in all kinds of makeshift setups and around the clock in their effort to keep us in good shape. They did a great job and we were all grateful, very grateful. Hospital tents were shelled regularly, but that didn't stop them. They even nursed the enemy pilot who was shot down after bombing the hospital tent area. They served in the true tradition of the Corps, with courage, with skill, and with devotion. After that came the Korean War. The Army nurse was there. <laughs> Punch Bowl, Pork Chop Hill, Heartbreak Ridge. Colorful names from the colorless Korean War, where there was one army nurse when the fighting started. Within two weeks, there were 57. Before it was over, the Corps grew to 5,500. 10% of them saw duty in the cold and the wind, the heat and the mud. One wouldn't find this type of clothing along Fifth Avenue. But then these nurses weren't in Korea to put on a fashion show. They were there to care for the ceaseless flow of wounded men. As they went about their duties, no one cared about their attire. As one war correspondent put it, they walked in beauty. When there was a lull in the fighting, that meant there was a chance to serve the community. But these respites were few. There was a greater need for their skill and stamina. As one commanding officer wrote, when all hope ebbed, each face remained compassionate because it was often the last thing on earth the soldiers saw. And today, once again, they are answering the call to arms. Our soldiers are fighting in far-off Vietnam, where the suffering and injuries of war are made even more difficult because of the climate. But in their suffering, they won't be ignored.
The Army nurse is there to heal, comfort, and encourage. The Army nurse is where the action is, in the heat of the tropics, tending to the sick and wounded in tents behind the lines. But tomorrow, these tents could be the lines in the fluid situation of such a hidden war. They live here, too. This canvas court is home. No matter how you spell it. Anywhere in the world, under any condition, the feminine mystique is ever-present, and along with it, the feminine ritual. But duty in Vietnam isn't all tense and baggy fatigues. These soldiers of mercy do get to wear crisp white uniforms. As with all areas in the army, duties vary. Here in another facility in Vietnam, the army nurse works side by side with other members of the medical team in their mutual dedication, that of healing and preserving human life. The men and women of the Army Nurse Corps, who are near the more urban areas, take advantage of their off-duty time to absorb the atmosphere and the culture of this Southeast Asian corner of the world. As in New York City, a cab ride here may not be the fastest way, but it does offer a chance to rest a little while getting to one's destination.